right, everyone, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today, we are breaking down outstanding lines, edge defender Aiden Hutchinson and his dominating performance against the Green Bay Packers. Got a great set of clips here, great set of film here against his uh, against the Packers, showing exactly how impactful Aiden Hutchinson is. As always, if you appreciate this content, leave us a like, give us a comment in the comment section below if you have any feedback for us or if there's another player you want us to break down. Without further ado, let's jump right into the film. All right, so we're going to open up with a clip of the Lions running a game or a kind of stunt deal. Here you have Aiden Hutchinson right there. He's had what we call wide nine technique. He's a five technique would be an outside shoulder of the tackle. He's out so wide, he'd be outside even a tight end. So that's why they'll call it a wide nine technique. Sometimes you'll hear that verbiage being used. And they're going to run just a tackle in stunt. So you're going to see the tackle right here. He's going to work vertically up the field and try and go into the offensive tackle. Aiden Hutchinson is going to take a step this way and try and loop around to try and get pressure in Jordan Love's face. This is a play that the Packers actually pick up really well, but Aiden Hutchinson turns it into a big play for the Lions. Let's check out what happens. All right, so you can see the stunt. You see Aiden Hutchinson coming around, and right there, the Packers have done a great job picking it up. This has a chance to be a really good play for the Green Bay Packers. But look at the effort and intensity from Aiden Hutchinson. He just keeps working, keeps driving. He ends up getting the stat. That's such an important element to his game. We talk about it all the time when we're talking about offensive or defensive linemen. If you keep your feet moving, if you keep driving, if you keep working, good things tend to happen. And we see that all day from Aiden Hutchinson. Because right here, the Packers, they won the rep, they think, right? They did a great job. They picked it up. But 97 here, he's got such a motor, such a competitive desire. He keeps working, keeps driving the guard back into the quarterback's lap and gets the sack. And that's another element to his game as well. Just his unadulterated power. We know he's a great athlete. We know he's got good size. He drives that guard directly into the quarterback. It's a big sack for the uh, Detroit Lions defense. And I tell you what, it's these kind of plays we've seen so far this season, and it looks like they're not going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, Nick, and this is the thing that really gets to me, is every time I think about it, how did this guy possibly fall to number two in the draft last season? I mean, this guy, he was so good. Everybody knew he was going to be good. The Jaguars didn't think he was going to be good, so they picked Trayvon Walker, who they thought was going to be better. That obviously was not true. But we can see this guy early on, just a beast. He's disrupting plays. And this is a Lions team that has always had trouble with the Packers. But now the last two seasons, this season especially, this looks like the best team in that division. I think it's largely because of how improved the defense is this year from last year and because of the leadership and play of a guy like Aiden Hutchinson. When you say. Tell you what, the way you win games in the NFL on defense, you got to get after the quarterback. You got to create negative plays, and we're getting, we've got a lot of great cutups to all the impacts he had to help creating, helping this defense create negative plays. And Aiden Hutchinson is just a negative play machine. He is going to be a nightmare for opposing defenses, not just the rest of the season, but for the rest of his career, most likely. All right, going the other direction now. There you can see Aiden Hutchinson, number ninety-seven. He is on the defense's right, our right as well. And we showed on the previous play, the first play of this film sequence. Aiden Hutchinson using his drive and motor, bullying through a guard to get a sack. And in situations like this, when offenses know a defense has a stellar guy like Aiden Hutchinson obviously is, they set up schemes to try and negate him. And what the Packers do, they're doing kind of a play action game here. So they're going to fake to the running back, but they're going to bring actually both tight ends across the formation here to try and block Aiden Hutchinson. They're going to take two potential receivers out of the route to see if they can secure Aiden Hutchinson. And when offenses do this, it opens up opportunities for other defenders to make plays. Let's check out what happens. So you can see both defenders come around. They get on Aiden Hutchinson, right? And there he's obviously not going to make the sack. But what you'll notice, right, is that if you have two tight ends blocking, obviously the running back on play action is going to block as well the first, the beginning of the play at least. You don't have any receivers out in the route. All you got is basically a one-man route. You got another route on the other side, I believe, right there. Like, there isn't anywhere for Jordan Love to go with the football because right now the Lions have the Packers outnumbered in the secondary, essentially two to one, right? There's nowhere to go with the football. And this opens up opportunities for other defensive linemen who now have one-on-one -on -one matchups. And here we see Isaiah Bugs here doing just that. Actually, he split a double team there. Great rep from Bugs. But this is what happens when you have a dominating defensive force and he gets production like Aiden Hutchinson has. He forces teams to bring multiple guys to uh, protect. He forces teams to take potential offensive receiving targets for the quarterback out of the passing game to bring him into block. It opens up opportunities for other defensive linemen to get sacks because the quarterback, every play is essentially a coverage stack, right? There's, how do you, every, every receiver for the Packers is double or triple teamed on this play. There is nowhere for Jordan Love to go with the football. 
and it's all because Aiden Hutchinson draws two potential receiving targets to pass protect, and the result is a sack for this Lions defense. Yeah, Nick, this reminds me of a few different defenses like the Aaron Donald effect where Aaron Donald draws all of the double teams and allows his teammates to come in, but specifically reminds me a while ago of when Jadavian Clowney and J.J. Watt were on the same team. J.J. Watt, you know, he would be able to bust through the line and get all of the big-time plays. He was such a great player. Clowney would draw a lot of double teams as well, and whoever wasn't getting the double team was the guy that was being the most productive. And this shows a, a good leader, a guy for the Lions, where if he can take up the double teams and he can be the guy that draws all the attention because of how good he is, he's going to let his teammates thrive, and his teammates are going to be making the plays as you see Bugs does here, who's also a very good player, as you pointed out. It was a great move by him. But this could be successful for the rest of the Lions' defensive line, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I think you brought up a great analogy with the Aaron Donald effect. Because while Aaron Donald is obviously an outstanding player, he dominates offensive linemen. He's also insanely productive. He gets a lot of sacks, gets a lot of tackles for loss. It's one thing just to make the guy miss and beat an offensive lineman or tight end. You've got to get the quarterback. You've got to get the running back. You've got to get the ball carrier, right? And Aaron Donald certainly can do that. And Aiden Hutchinson is shown he can do that as well. And when you have production like that, it scares the living daylights out of offensive coaches. It forces them to call plays like these, which allows your secondary to double or triple team wide receivers. It's one-on-one or potential one-on-one matchups for your fellow defensive linemen. And the quarterback just has no chance. And it results in big time negative plays. All right, so there's Aiden Hutchinson right there. He is on all right, the defense is left. And on the previous play, we showed how much a double team picking two guys on the offense to attribute for a Hutchinson opened up a defensive lineman, a fellow defensive lineman to get a sack. Here, the, the Packers have decided to take not one, not two, but three guys on Hutchinson. We're going to have Tom Post kind of inside, but he's going to be picking up Hutchinson here. He's going to have a big eye and big arm on him. 83 for the Packers is going to be blocking him. The Packers are going to once again bring a tight end across the formation, try and block him as well. So there you go. You're going to have three guys focused on one guy right there, and that's going to really limit what the Packers can do offensively, and it's going to allow other Lions defenders to make big plays. Let's see what happens. So there you can see right here, you can see Zach Tom, the right tackle for the Packers. He's posting hard on Aiden Hutchinson. He's got him. 83 is on him as well. You can see number 88 for the Packers coming around and picking him up as well. So again, three guys, two of them eligible receivers on one Lions defender. That's obviously a big sign of respect. But again, if you notice that, there's really not a lot of guys in pass routes. And that allows defensive uh, defensive players, whether it's linebackers or people in the secondary corners and safeties, to react quickly and make plays. You can see Anzalone gets hands up and tips the ball. Look at all the Lions defenders around the football. Again, if some of these other eligible receivers from the Packers, like 83 or 88, are running routes, whatever they may be, there's not as many eyes around the football right there because there's not even as many receivers out in the pass route. But because everyone is so focused on Aiden Hutchinson, All these guys in coverage are flying to the only guy within 30 yards of them. And that means when balls get tipped, which great play by Anzalone here, it's going to be an interception. There's just too many bodies around the football for that to not happen. Again, this was a nice play by Anzalone. Obviously, great deflection here. It all starts up from Aiden Hutchinson. Not only is he taking up Zach Palm for a period of time, a really good pass blocker for the Green Bay Packers, he's also eliminating two potential eligible receivers for the Green Bay Packers which means there's a pack of Lions defenders in zone coverage, which means deflections happen and interceptions happen because of it. Again, huge play for the Lions, and it all starts with number 97 up front. Yeah, Nick, and it's almost insane to say this, but a guy that's getting triple teamed on the line of scrimmage and Aiden Hutchinson causes an interception in a sense. Like, you would never think that that would be possible. But this is a guy, Aiden Hutchinson, getting triple teamed, drawing all of this protection to him, drawing all the attention to him. Everybody's thinking about where he is on the field. And in a way, because of that, this allows the Lions to get an interception. I mean, how crazy is that, that a guy getting triple team, you wouldn't even imagine that you could say something like that causes an interception, Nick. Well, it's just, again, you brought it up before, the Aaron Donald effect. We've seen it with Micah Parsons for the Dallas Cowboys at times as well. When you have one guy that gets so much attention, it just frees up the defenders to just, because again, we talk about offensive linemen when they're blocking. Hey, don't protect grass, find defenders to block. The defenders in zone coverage are very much the same way. When they drop into their zones, right, they're not just dropping into grass. It's not like Madden, a video game. They're trying to find bodies running nearest to their zone. So right here, when everyone's dropping into zone coverage, right, and there's no receivers out in the route except for Christian Watson, everyone's running right to him. 
And when that happens, turnovers are going to happen. And again, it's all because everyone is so focused on blocking number 97. All right, a little bit later in the game, the Packers are obviously backed up. They're at the minor state, which means they're at their own eight-yard line. There you go. You see Aiden Hutchinson right there on all right. The defense is left. And we've shown a few plays so far in this cutup of the Packers trying to double and sometimes triple team Hutchinson. And it did not work out for the Green Bay Packers. At this point, they're trailing big. They're changing up the strategy to say, okay, we're going to go one-on-one. Zach Tom on Aiden Hutchinson. We think Tom's a great pass blocker. We like this matchup here. Well, guess what? It doesn't work out too good for the Packers. Let's check out what happens. Okay, right there, one-on-one -on -one and a clean beat. Quarterback space. About to be a safety. I tell you what, that's a great play from Jordan Love to avoid the safety and, you know, at least turning into some kind of play. I think they actually end up gaining a yard. But again, we saw it already in this film. They go one-on-one, on, uh, two-on-one, three-on-one in terms of double-teaming, triple-teaming Aiden Hutchinson. It frees up other guys. The Packers are like, we can't do that. It's not helping us, our offense, at all. We're getting stymied. We're going to have to go one-on-one -on -one with him sometimes, and we think Zach Tom is a good enough player to handle that. Aiden Hutchinson is just better. Just clean beats him, and then gets north and south, keeps fighting, stays after the quarterback. This close to being a safety. To me, this is what really frustrates offensive coaches, because here's a guy in Aiden Hutchinson who not only can beat you one-on-one -on -one with a really good pass blocker. Right now, the Packers' best pass blocker on the field is number 50. Not only can he beat him cleanly, not, can he, not only can he get to the quarterback and completely blow up this play, but he also can disrupt double teams and triple teams and all other guys to make plays as well. This guy, Aiden Hutchinson, has become so good that he essentially can game wreck an entire offense's game plan by himself. And that just makes it almost impossible for teams to consistently move the ball against the Lions. I tell you what, you talk about the fact that the Jaguars screwed up taking Walker instead of Hutchinson. The Lions, Dan Campbell, uh, Holmes, they deserve a lot of credit for sticking with this guy, picking him, fell into their lap, and he took advantage of it. Because right now, he's playing like maybe the best defensive player in football. Yeah, Nick, and this is, we talk about one-on-ones, two-on-ones, all of that stuff. This is the number one on number one, the best defensive player on the field versus the best offensive lineman you allude to, Tom. This guy is ranked 13th out of 67 tackles in the league per PFF. This guy's a 76.3 PFF grade. He is a very good player, but him one-on-one -on -one with Aiden Hutchinson is not a good matchup. It is a losing matchup for the Packers, and when your number one player cannot block the number one player on the other side of the line, bad things are going to happen, and I think this is why it is such a crucial deal for the Lions to have a guy like Aiden Hutchinson because he demands pretty much a double team every single time. He's on the ball. When a guy like Tom, who's very good, he's a strong player for the Packers, he doesn't even have a chance of really blocking Hutchinson. I think this creates those offensive-defensive matchups we talk about, uh, mismatchups we talk about all the time when you say Nick. Well, it just imagine if you're an offensive coach. You're like, okay, if we put two guys on Hutchinson or three guys on Hutchinson, the result is a sack or an interception. Okay, we're just going to have to put best on best on him, and the result is nearly a safety, right? It's a great play by the quarterback just to avoid the safety. What do you call if you're an offensive play caller? It, it doesn't matter what you scheme up when you have a defensive player who can just destroy one-on-ones like this, and when he draws double and triple teams, other guys step up. I mean, this Lions defense is just going to only get better and better, and it starts with 97. All right, two-minute situation. Here we go. We have Aiden Hutchinson right there. He's lined up in what I would probably call a three-technique technically, but he's really just a stand-up pass rusher. It's in two minutes, so there's no real distinguishable positions here. The Packers are going to pretty much kind of double team him. He's going to work kind of inside. And the Packers, once again, pick him up and do a pretty good job blocking. But this just shows Aiden Hutchinson's greatness. When even the offensive linemen do a great job blocking him, which is going to happen sometimes, he still makes the play. Let's check it out. Right there, goes inside. He's picked up. This is a really good job by the Packers offensive line here on this specific play. Again, sometimes the offensive line is going to win the rep, and they certainly do that, right? That's a decent pocket for Jordan Love. But watch Aiden Hutchinson right there. He knows he's blocked, right? He knows he's got no real chance to get to the quarterback in this situation. Look at his eyes. He basically, I think on his own, I don't think this is the scheme. It could be the scheme, but I think this is just him being a smart player. Recognizes, loves in scramble mode, stays parallel to the line of scrimmage, and completely disrupts this. Because right here, Jordan Love escapes. Right there, Jordan Love's like, okay, I can break out. I can run. I can throw the ball down the field. And right there, Aiden Hutchinson right in his face completely negates it. And at this point, Jordan Love then just becomes just freaks out, doesn't know what to do, and then the cavalry comes and ends up being an incomplete pass. These are the plays that really matter, because in this situation, great quarterbacks, we see this from guys like Patrick Mahomes, from Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, right? 
They get outside the pocket right here. Maybe they run for 20 yards. Maybe they're able to throw it down the field for a big play because you've got a defensive lineman that can't recognize what the quarterback is doing in this situation, which is really hard, by the way. This, this is a really tough situation. But Aiden Hutchinson does, and he stays right in front of Jordan Love like a perfect quarterback spy. Like he's spying him like an elite linebacker here. Again, phenomenal athlete. Forces Jordan Love to peel back. Calvary arrives in complete pass. Again, these situations, nine times out of 10 with a good athletic quarterback, is a big play for the offense. Instead, it's an incomplete pass. Quarterback actually takes a big hit. That's another element to Aiden Hutchinson's game. It's not just drawing the double and triple teams. It's not just dominating one-on-one. He's smart. He's savvy. He understands what offenses are trying to do. And he forces quarterbacks to make decisions they don't want to make. And he always helps his other guys out. I mean, this is a play. It doesn't end up on Hutchinson's stat sheet. It ends up as a pressure and a hit for number 79. But it's all because of number 97. Yeah, Nick. And they talk about in this guy's draft profile from last year. He has such good agility for a guy this size, and we see his motion and his ability to follow a guy like Jordan Love, who's pretty quick in his own right, but Aiden Hutchinson's 6'7", almost 270 pounds, and he's so agile. His movement, his ability to come off the block and mirror him, like you said, almost like an elite-level linebacker, but twice the size, pretty much. This guy is just a phenomenal athlete, and I think making plays like this is exactly why he got picked up uh, in the first round, why he should have been the first overall draft pick last year. But this guy looks like a defensive weapon for the Lions, and I'm really excited to see how he progresses because if this guy keeps going, Nick, he could be the next Aaron Donald, wouldn't you say? In some, I mean, he's a different player than Donald or Micah Parsons or even the Boses. I don't know if we've seen someone like Aiden Hutchinson in a really long time. I've had a hard time trying to find a guy that can do everything he does. He is literally like the complete edge defender. There, there, he has no weaknesses to his game. We're going to show a run up next. He just does it all, whether it's beating one-on-one, whether it's drawing double teams, playing with a high motor, stunt, stunt uh, twist games inside, quarterback spy. He literally has no weakness. He plays so hard. He's tough. He's smart. He's savvy. This could be the next generation of great defensive linemen. All right, so we've shown a number of times with the Packers in the passing game, whether it's one-on-one against Aiden Hutchinson or throwing double teams, triple teams, it doesn't matter. He finds a way to blow it up. In fact, even when they block him, he becomes a great quarterback spy and makes big plays for the Lions defense. But at this point, the Packers are like, okay, we've got to run the ball. We've got to run right at him to see if we can create something here. And here the Packers come up with a pretty well-designed play. So it's just basically going to be kind of a zone read to the offense's right or left, kind of right at Aiden Hutchinson, who's right there at left defensive end. So what we're going to find here is that basically the, the Packers are base blocking there. They're doing kind of a double team here, trying to work up to the um, Anzalone right there. We're going to get kind of an anchor down block back technique here. We're going to get the right tackle working up to number 55 for Detroit. This tight end is going to come across the formation and kick out Aiden Hutchinson. It's going to act like a zone read. It's going to act like a zone read. So the running back is going to take this way. Quarterback is going to turn his shoulders and come out the backside here. The goal here is there's a sort of an outside contain. There's a corner out here that you really can't see. He's going to kind of stay on the quarterback there. And the goal, again, if Tom gets up to 55 and the tight end kicks out Hutchinson, you can see the natural seal. Let me clear up the screen a little bit for you there. You can see there's going to be a natural seal they want to run through right here and get north and south. It's a really well-designed play, but Aiden Hutchinson blows it up. Check out what happens. So again, you can see right there, you can see everyone's basically working back to the, for the Packers offensive line. You've got Zach Tom, number 50, working up to 55. He's got the angle. You can see exactly the steal they're trying to run through right there. You've got, I think it's a fake zone read. I don't think they're actually reading it. You can see the tight end coming across here to potentially kick out Aiden Hutchinson. And if you look at it, right, if Aiden Hutchinson gets kicked out, right, if he gets kicked out towards the sideline, this is actually going to be a big play for the Green Bay Packers. But look at Hutchinson's technique there. First of all, look how... Look how square he is to the line of scrimmage. That's beautiful. He keeps going down. He stays square, stays flat. And then he immediately does a really good kind of spill technique. And this is what you kind of want to do for an edge defender or any defensive lineman. When someone's calling to pull you or move across the line of scrimmage to kick you out, you want to stay parallel to the line of scrimmage and basically not let them kick you out. So right there, see how he's basically at the same level as the tight end and so far down into the area? It forces this. This is no longer going to be a kickout block. Aaron Jones, the running back for the Green Bay Packers, has to bounce it. Again, I want to back that up so you can see it. It's a little muddled, but he does a phenomenal job. Just right here, if you're a defensive lineman, I'll back it up just a little bit more. Sometimes defensive linemen get a little north and south in this situation, and it naturally creates a target area for the tight end, and it opens up the seam for the running back. 
Hutchinson stays right on the line of scrimmage, stays perfectly parallel to the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's outstanding. And it engages the tight end absolutely beautifully. So that way the running back has no choice to bounce it out. Now, remember what I said about the outside corner who was going to be watching Jordan Love? You basically brought this corner who had his eye on Jordan Love in perfect position to make the tackle. And that's exactly what happened. You talk about textbook, perfect discipline playing this defense. Again, Aiden Hutchinson does it absolutely phenomenally there. This is a guy who not only makes plays in the pass game, but is an outstanding run defender as well.